Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a really exciting PC build for you. This is one of the best value PCs I've ever put together, including several brand new parts, and in my mind, pat myself on the back here, a really good usage of the used market going on with this particular PC as well. So I know you don't have a great look at this PC from where you guys are sitting, so I'll give you some B-roll throughout here. But we're looking at a case here, the Matrix 30, which really surprised me. And I know we're starting with one of the more boring components, but it's the thing that everyone sees when they walk in a room. And I love this case for the price. I gave $30 plus shipping. I think it was like $36 or $37 after everything was said and done to actually get this PC case shipped to my door from Newegg. And uh, it's still on Newegg as well for that price last time I actually checked. And this case is fantastic for the price. There are plenty of cutouts for cable management. The uh, back panel here has sort of a uh, pushed out section of it so you can route cables behind the motherboard tray. Uh, it has really nice drive bay here that actually is really easy to work with as well as a couple of SSD mounts in there. And uh, cable management, if I do say so myself, and I'll pat myself on the back a little bit, was one of the better systems I put together recently as far as the cable management goes. I felt like cable management was actually a breeze with this system and that's including a ketchup and mustard power supply that uh, has no modularity whatsoever. It was actually really easy to handle. So really good value with this case if you're looking for th something with a tempered side glass too. Uh, $36 or $37 shipped to your door. To me, that's a great value for a brand new case. Now, moving on to the core of the system is one of these motherboards. This is from Jingsha. This was an AliExpress uh, motherboard sent to me. This is actually the second one I've used. This is one of those X79 motherboards that feature a LGA 1356 socket with one of those Xeon E5 uh, in here as a 2420V2. The last one I looked at, I think, was the 2450V2. But to give you a little bit of an idea on the whole system, which comes in at just under $300, the motherboard can be had on AliExpress. I've seen it for uh, today was as cheap as $53 or so. dollars. The uh, CPU can you can actually get for under $18 right now on AliExpress. And then the RAM, which I also got on AliExpress, though I shouldn't have after looking at eBay, I got my RAM for a little bit like uh, $32 maybe, something like that. I think it was uh, 14 and change and maybe just a tiny shipping cost on top of it per stick. And I got two sticks. So I think it came out to like $31. But you can find ECC memory and that's one of the big advantages here is that you can get ECC memory for this. You can get 16 gigabytes of ECC memory on eBay for about 25 bucks in the US, and that's including the shipping costs. So the platform itself, the whole platform together, comes out to about $100, depending on what kind of deals you're getting. So it's a great starter platform because you can get started with it so cheaply. Now, of course, because these uh, CPUs won't be coming with coolers, you do have to invest another 10 or 15 bucks in just a cheap cooler. The good news is the 2420 V2 is not a hot chip, so you can just grab a uh, pretty much a bottom of the barrel cheapo cooler and it'll be good to go. Uh, obviously you're not overclocking it because this motherboard does not support overclocking in any way, base clock or otherwise. So uh, you're stuck with the uh, base clock, which is I think 2.2 gigahertz. So pretty low clocks, but it's six cores and 12 threads and it does boost up to like 2.5, 2.6 under uh, load. Now this cooler on it right now is actually getting removed at some point. I just wanted to get the system together and I was waiting on a cooler for the system and I felt like just running my test today. So I didn't want to wait on a cooler to actually come in the mail when that's the only thing I was waiting for. So this is a side big heat sink on it. I actually didn't even use the fan. I'm just using that back, back exhaust fan to sort of pull air through it. There is no front fan in this case. It's one of the only downsides, but at $35 again, it's a great case for the value. Uh, there's a power supply at the bottom. That's the Antec 450 watt. That's a used part uh, or a refurbished part. I think I got that on Amazon warehouse deals. And then this RX 480 here is a fantastic deal I got on eBay for $70. Normally I see 480s going for more like 80 or 85 or $90 right now on eBay. So getting one for only $70 was a real win for this budget. 500 gigabyte hard drive, you can get those for like 22 bucks on Amazon all day long. And then a 120 gigabyte SSD is the boot drive. All this combined, the parts for this were uh, $295 and change. 
and I got a Windows key for $3.75. So my total is under the $300 price point. It's gotta be something like $2.98, $2.99, depending on the, the change involved. So this is a fantastic value uh, from a hardware perspective because as the benchmarks bear out, uh, this computer actually can run games at 1080p quite strongly still on the high preset. We're not knocking settings down very far here. Now these games aren't running on ultra because uh, I think with settings in general, you get a little bit of a diminished return when you go for the ultra settings. Now, if I had a 1080 Ti and a high-end processor in here, absolutely I don't care about sacrificing some FPS because it's still gonna be blowing the doors off at 1080p. But at 1080p, with a system like this, you're trying to strike that balance between resolution uh, and eye candy. And I think that the high preset does a really good job of balancing your, your frames that you're getting with the eye candy that you're gonna be seeing. So uh, all the games look great. I'll say that right now. All these games looked really, really solid and they perform quite well for a system that's built on such an old platform. But the thing about this system is there's actually an upgrade path because you can get the eight core. Uh, in 16th thread uh, 2450v2 and actually throw in eight cores and get a little bit of an upgrade. Now it's not a great upgrade path. It's not like a Ryzen upgrade path where you could have started on X370 and be still using the next generation processors that haven't even launched yet. But we're talking about a system of $300 completely put together that can still play modern AAA titles, 60 FPS, 1080p. Uh, you may have to knock settings down a little bit depending on the title. But all that aside, I'm being rambling enough. Let's get into the benchmarks and see just how well this does on a couple of modern, more e-sporty titles. And then we're gonna also take a look at The Witcher 3 because it's, even though an older game, still a little bit graphically demanding. Unfortunately, my library just doesn't have a whole lot of modern games. And I was gonna look at Rage 2, but that purchase is actually currently in dispute with PayPal and G2A because of a uh, seller that was undercutting everyone else. And uh, yeah, selling invalid keys apparently. So hopefully I'll get my money back. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, bring Rage 2 benchmarks eventually with uh, future hardware. Not really gonna deal with it right now. Just trying to get my money back out of that deal because I don't really like paying $60 for a brand new game. Let's take a look at the benchmarks I did run, even though there's only a few, let's take a look at these benchmarks I did run and uh, see just how well this CPU and this uh, GPU combination is performing. As we get into these benchmarks, understand that the Apex Legends benchmark as well as the Fortnite one, the capture here is the problem with this footage. It wasn't actually stuttering like this in game. This was purely on my Elgato capture card. Though once I unplugged the USB cable, plugged it back in, it seemed to smooth out the issues I was having and the other games uh, recorded just fine. Regardless, the actual gameplay was really nice, especially after actually hitting the ground where a lot of Battle Royale games sort of struggle. Uh, Apex Legends was very smooth averaging 82 FPS and having a 5% low, still above 60 at 63. 1% lows and 0.1% lows were also still very good at 56 and 48 respectively. Fortnite was a very similar story to Apex Legends, even though, again, the footage here is garbage. The experience was actually really nice with an average FPS of 84 and 5% low still above 60 at that 66 mark. And then once again, with the 1% and 0.1% lows are both very acceptable. Fortnite did see a couple of dips that were a little bit lower than Apex, but these weren't really noticeable in game, so I don't really see this as affecting the actual playability of the game whatsoever. The worst experience of my testing was actually in The Witcher 3, especially when I was running into town here. You can probably even see a little bit of stuttering as I run along, and this was just after entering the game, but when I actually jumped over to the wilderness and got outside of town and was in the game for a few minutes, things did seem to smooth out a little bit, so I don't know if the game was still loading assets in the back background and that was causing some of my stutter. Regardless, the average FPS here on the high preset with no hair works was still a very nice 61, which is hitting that 60 FPS mark we like to see. Though you do see the dips that we saw early on reflected in the 0.1% low clear down there at 10. The 1% low actually is respectable, clear up at 41 and 5% low also respectable, but those early dips definitely drug down the 0.1% low and it's something to be aware of if you're planning on playing this game with this type of setup. And then last just for kicks, I did run the Metro Last Light built-in benchmark, and I'll go ahead and throw up the charts on the screen now so you can kind of see how that went, but it did manage to run Metro Last Light at least very, very well. 
So there it is, guys. This is a great budget option in case you're with somebody that's wanting to build a PC. You're not really wanting to go the Dell Optiplex route and just buy a pre-built and then add a GPU, which would be a little bit cheaper. Might even get you about the same performance. Uh, but this system, obviously, aesthetically, is far more pleasing and still comes in at a really, really affordable price point. Uh, and I did put together a little bit of a, a parts guide with this particular system. Now, the parts guide I put together probably resulted in it being more like 320 because I did get some really good deals here. But if you're interested in putting together a system just like this or very similar to this, go ahead and check out that parts guide. I'll link a card or something. I do want to know what you think about this system, of course. And I know people out there are going to be commenting because every time I bring up these older Intel systems, people are commenting about the uh, security flaws and that sort of thing. And yes, I guess that's a risk you take. I haven't really heard about any high profile breaches using those flaws. Uh, as far as I know, they've really only been used in a, uh, in a lab setting. But if that's something that does truly concern you, then this probably isn't the system for you. But if you're just looking for a system to go gaming on, then this may be a great option if you only have about $300 laying around for the tower itself. I do wanna hear your thoughts on the system though. Let me know those thoughts down below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a big like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are super helpful to the channel. You can follow me on both Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.